We have to wait for the leader. After the I don't know, three or four weeks? Three or four weeks? I don't know. Leave me alone. Huh? Say again? You only have yeah, six, 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 seven, seven. Don't look, guys. Look, the thing you should be worrying about now is doing your test. Yeah. Let me worry about your results. You don't have to worry about our results. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about correcting them on time. Uh, okay. Uh, you want to ask me something, Shasta? Um. No. Explain the difference, yeah. We could give the definition of each. That's fine. Yeah, so you could say fusion is uh and fission is uh that's fine, yeah. Okay, uh photons next, if you can write this down. Photons. Photons. It's friend of protons? Uh no. No, unfortunately not. Is this hard to or Hang on, you just relax, you you'll discover everything. <laughs> In the next 60 minutes, all will be answered. Photon. 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 Only the different thing is just R or H. <laughs> That's an important Photon. difference. Uh, okay, got that? So, boom. Bit to do. Uh, a. Oh, actually. I, I think actually I, I got my grammar wrong here. Um, did someone? I was no, not pen F. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I actually I got my grammar backwards here. I said quantum is singular and plural is quanta. So I think I actually have that backwards. Can someone just put into Google a uh, definition quantum? I'm pretty sure I have this backwards actually. I need to fix that. Yeah, quanta I think is one and quantum is two. Like datum and data. D yeah, like data and datum, yeah. Quantural quanta. What's the plural? Uh, plural is qu oh, M G. I was right. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, yeah, quantum is singular and quanta is plural. All right. One, I would like one quantum, please. I would like two quanta, please. Quantum. All right. Anyway, what is a quantum? So, quantum. does anyone actually know before I show you what a quantum is? Yeah. Quantum is that. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, but more generally speaking, rather than like that's uh, that would be a quantum of energy, but just more generally speaking what a quantum is. Yeah, 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 yeah. The key idea is it's something discrete or like minimum. So a quantum is the minimum amount of any physical entity involved in an interaction. So in other words, it's like the minimum amount you can have of something. What um what's the least what is the least number of children a mother could have? What is the least number of children a mother could have? No? One. See, because I said a mother, so you already know that must be at least one. Okay, so that's like a quantum. A quantum is like the smallest unit you can have in a process. Yeah? Do you get the idea? Yeah? So, so far we actually had no need for quanta, for example. We don't have any understanding of uh, uh, now. She that should be quantum of distance. I need the singular. Quanta of distance. There isn't any minimum distance. 
You know, like what's the smallest distance we've dealt with? It's 10 to the minus 15, I think. Isn't that the smallest unit we've used? But of course you could have 10 to the minus 16, 10 to the minus 17, you know, there's, there's no minimum. Uh, distance can be any number, etc., etc. Okay? Right, so, on to what exactly a photon is. Uh, a photon, I'm sure somebody might actually know this already, since, since you know what quantum is, you probably know what photon is. Right. What right. precisely? Right. Now get it right. I mean, light. Yeah, no, I, I understand you, yeah. yeah. This is right. This is called a uh, photon. Yeah. Photon is right. Let's, see what, right. <laughs> let's see what Shamsa has to say. Yeah. Go on, Shamsa. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, we're having the right idea, but just if some somebody has the exact, uh, what do you think it is, Audrey? Uh, uh, light, you know, it's Yeah, that's it, yeah, it's light is made out of photons. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and a photon is a single <coughs> quantum of light, and it's referred to as a light quantum. So in other words, a photon is the smallest amount of light that you could have, really. It's the sort of minimum energy of light, the minimum amount, the minimum packet of light. See, we kind of have an idea about quantum from chemistry and atoms. So although we all look continuous, when we look deep down, we we'll see that everything is made up of atoms. And you can't have half an atom, right? You can't have half a hydrogen. You can only have a whole hydrogen. So these protons, neutrons, and electrons, they're like, they're like quanta. They represent a sort of minimum amount of a thing that you can have, a minimum mass. You can't have, you can't have half an electron, okay? So it's kind of the same thing with light. Light is made up of photons, and these are like minimum little pieces of light. Yeah. Okay, continue. So, we should think of light as a group of photons. So when we think about light, we should think of them as photons, lots of photons coming out. Right, so, we have some distance, we have a smaller distance, we have an even smaller distance, an even smaller distance, even smaller distance, even smaller... There. No smallest. No, no distance? No smallest. There's no minimum distance. Okay. Now, uh, it's not true about light. You see, you have some light wave, a smaller light wave, an even smaller light wave, and it can get smaller and smaller, etc. But then you have the smallest light wave, which is a photon of light, and then, then there's no light. You can't have in between. Again, this should remind you a little bit of uh, another thing is electron orbit. You know, you have a minimum orbit. The first orbit, uh, whatever that letter is, what is it, 1p or, what's the first one? 1s. 1S. But you can't have less than 1s orbit, okay? There's like a minimum and then it's nothing, okay? So that's exactly what the photon is. Okay, now you don't need to write this down, I'm just really trying to make the idea clear. So, a photon of light is like an atom of light. Okay. Right. So, what is a photon exactly? Uh, a photon is a particle of light. That is a single quanta of light. I really don't know about my singular and plural is right anymore. Whatever. Uh, a single quanta of light. You mixed it. Uh, terribly, yeah. So, which definition? You have two definitions for photons. Now, the first one I gave you. Thing it's just saying it's a single quantum of light, yeah. which is true. Uh, and this is also true. You can say it's a, uh, a photon is a particle of light. In other words, um, I didn't give you two definitions by accident. There's, there's two different ways to think about it. You can think of the photon as like a, like a particle. 
And you can also think of it as a mini little wave. We kind of have two pictures we we're starting to imagine. Which means photons have a mass for Kind of. Kind of not. Uh, I can tell you that a photon has momentum. What is momentum? What is momentum? You know what momentum is. What momentum is momentum? Ah, no, no. What's momentum? You just wrote it in your lab report for Newton. Yeah. Yeah. Momentum is... How can I say that? What's the formula for momentum? Momentum? Yep. And V. There you go. Yeah. So... Photons have momentum. I mean, photons have a mass. No. Why? Complicated. Right. Einstein discovered the energy of a light photon uh, depends only on the frequency of the light. Now, that's actually, before I continue, that's actually a surprising result, okay? You think about an ocean wave, and you think about the ocean wave hitting the ship, all right? What wave would have more energy? Well, it would be the wave that has the bigger amplitude. Wouldn't that be more energy hitting the ship? Can you picture that in your mind? Yeah. So you imagine that maybe the same thing is true for light. That if the light has more amplitude, then that light has more energy. But in fact, what Einstein discovered, well, it was discovered kind of before Einstein as well, that the energy actually depends on the frequency, which is quite surprising. So the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. And the dependence is linear. So uh, the energy of light is just equal to this constant times its frequency. So if you multiply the frequency by two of the light, then you double the energy. So this means light of different color has different energy. Uh, so the red color has less energy. No. More, more energy. Less energy. Red color. Red. A red is less. Energy. Yeah. And then orange has more. Yellow has more. Green has more, etc. Now H is called Planck's constant. And this is its value. You'll notice it's quite small. Why JS? Why JS? Okay, I'll do that now. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And also the formula book. This formula used to be on your chemistry course, but it's it's not on it anymore. But I'll just tell you that if you saw this in your chemistry class, or if you saw it on notes online. Sometimes people don't use F for frequency, they use this letter. I think I might have said this, uh, energy equals H nu, which is a Greek letter. But I would stick to HF. Okay. Uh, Wookie was asking me why is the unit joule seconds? Let's have a look. So if E equals HF, then H equals E over F. So the units would be, what's units for uh, energy? Joules and frequency? Hertz or per second. So the answer will be joule seconds. Okay? Uh, that's the unit for H. Um, I think the relationship between the color of light and its energy goes back about 300 years. You know, back to the time of Newton. So what people used to do is you have your prism your light comes in and the colour split and you have red up here, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet and uh, you put little thermometers beside them little, little thermometers on the table and you notice that the red thermometer is not as hot as the orange and the orange is not as hot as the green and so on so the relationship between heat and colour is old the exact relationship was discovered by Einstein using this formula here, E equals HF. So a simple formula. Okay, continue? Yeah. yeah. Now, in fact, it is actually important that the H is really, really small. It's actually something important in physics. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so here's a simple question I want you to calculate for me. A photon of red light has a wavelength of 400 nanometers. Uh, a, what's the frequency? And B, how much energy does it have in joules? And C, how much energy does it have in electron volts? Give that one a try, it should only take you a minute. new formula uh, E equals HF. The H is on your calculator, I think. And you'll have the F from part A. Oh yeah, so how to get to the F. So to refresh your memory, you have to use the formula V equals lambda F from waves. Do you remember this one, V equals lambda F? Yeah. And what's the V for this one? Yeah. Huh? Why is VC? Because it's light. The speed of light is C. C is 3 times 10 power 8. Okay, have we got this? Yeah. Let's do the first one. So, uh, the formula here will be C. Sorry, um, what's the value? What constant is C on the old? Six. Six? Is C? Uh, uh, 38. 38. Uh, the other one must be, uh, no, 30. What is it? 30. 28. Over 400 nano. Okay, so the frequency I hope you got is this. How much energy does this have? So what do I multiply this by? H. H. So for part B now, multiplying by H. Uh, that is 6, is it? Yeah. So this is the energy, but that's very small, so let's convert it to electron volts. Uh, 23... 3.1 electron volts, the final answer. Okay, yeah, continue. Question? I know. It's also a small wave. But how can it remote? We'll discover in lecture 9. You'll just have to wait till then. Um, what did you say your presentation was on? It's not... No, nobody's doing it on quantum then. Okay. Alright, next. Uh, your mobile phone operates at an electromagnetic frequency of about 900 megahertz. So, you, you kind of forget this, but your phone, there's, there's an electromagnetic wave coming off of this all the time. It's communicating with the uh, mobile tower maybe one kilometer away, okay? You just you can't see it. But if you, if you could see it, from everybody's pocket there will be a, a wave coming out. And the frequency is 900 megahertz. That's the network frequency, I think, in Ireland. Uh, and how much energy is this? Well, I think your phone is about 4 watts. Now, I, the signal of the phone is 4 watts. Obviously, the screen and everything else uses more energy, but I just care about the, the signal part is 4 watts. Okay. 
Uh, how many photons are coming out of your phone during a phone call per second? So you're on the phone, and you can picture the wave coming out of your phone. How many photons is that per second? So, firstly, we're looking at per second. So how much energy is that per second, if it's 4 watts? How many joules of energy is that? 4 joules, because it's 4 watts, 4 joules a second, okay? Uh, what you could do is work out how many photons you would need to make four joules of energy, and that's the answer. Okay, so see what you can get. How many photons do you need to make four joules of energy? And the photons have this frequency. Yeah. Do you want to calculate it? I don't have eight. You do, I gave it to you. What you mean to say is you didn't write down H. Yeah. yeah. Because you are a bad student. Not too bad. Ah no, not too bad. No no. Mm. I have another South Korean physics student who is worse than you. Who? I know I wouldn't say. Mm, I know I wouldn't say. No, I'm just joking. I know no. two 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 South Korean students. KJ and oh KJ and uh, what's her name? Uh, ah, Chrissy. Chrissy's not Korean. Name. Really? Yeah. I didn't know <laughs> that. <laughs> you don't say. I thought it was a traditional Korean name. You know? No. No. That's an English name. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting, Chrissy. <laughs> Okay, do we have an answer here? So this is this is what I was thinking, okay? You need the energy to equal four joules. Uh, what's the formula for energy? HF. HF. But of course, that's just for one photon. If you have many, many photons like this, then it'll be NHF. And we're actually looking for the N. How many, okay? So the N will be four over HF. Do we know the F? Well, we do. It's, what is it, 900 mega or something, isn't it? Yeah. Whoops. Uh, is it 900 mega? Yeah. So, per second, my phone releases uh, this many photons. Uh, that's like 10 moles of photons, isn't yeah. it? Roughly 10 moles of photons. Yeah. It's a lot of photons per second. Bashing into your head as you're on the phone. Just think about all those photons passing through your head as you're talking on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. For some people, it's easier for the photons to pass through their head than others. For many reasons. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's the answer for this one. Not too difficult. Uh, I saw this as a section A question a few years ago. Uh, okay. Now, next, so uh, changing gears a little bit, we're going to be looking at uh, electrons now for a moment. Uh, electrons on the surface of a metal are trapped. They require energy to be freed. So therefore, we say they have a negative potential energy. So if I think about... You know this from chemistry as well. When you have a conductor like metal, then you have what you call it, a sea of electrons or something, isn't it? So you have lots of these little electrons here on the surface of the metal. Uh, let's, let's go fancy. Uh, what metal? We say gold? That's AU, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so whatever metal, gold. These electrons are trapped. And you know from mechanics that if something is trapped, we say its potential energy is negative. So, they need some energy to be freed, and the energy that they need to be freed, we call that the work function. So, to be precise, the work function is the minimum energy you need to remove an electron from a solid. Uh, so, if I want to remove this electron from here to here, that is, if I want to free it, 
here the energy is minus the work function and here the energy is zero so you need you need this much energy to free it now that number is going to be different for each material okay but it's called the work function of the metal it's the energy needed to free an electron from its surface to somewhere outside of its surface now just be careful with the definition is this a positive or a negative the way I have it defined look at my definition and tell me is this a positive or a negative because of the way I defined it you've got a 50-50 chance Wow, this is a lot of thinking. Correct. You're putting, it, you're giving it energy, so that's positive. Uh, if I rephrase it as the work function is the um, uh, energy of a trapped electron, then then it will be negative of the definition. So in other words, my point is, we say that the energy when it's trapped is minus phi. Ah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. English is fun, isn't it? Let me see. <laughs> the work function is the minimum energy needed to remove an electron from a solid. No, I suppose you don't need to write the rest of the sentence down. So much hatred for sentences. So long. You need to wrap so long. Oh. Right, continue. You got this, Bruce? Yeah. Yep, okay. Um, so, in fact, one way you can give the electrons energy is by having photons hit them. And when a photon hits the metal and causes the release of an electron from the metal surface, uh, this will only happen if the photon has enough energy. This is called the photoelectric effect. So, back in my picture, if this electron is trapped, the way I can free it is by firing a, pro uh, a photon at it. Now, because its energy is minus phi, it can only be freed if the energy of the photon is equal to phi, because it needs to give it enough energy. Okay? But if it does have enough energy, then it will be freed. And this process of using photons to free an electron, this process is called the photoelectric effect. The reverse is also true, but before that, actually, um, the point here, you don't have to write, listen, you don't have to write every word down, I'll tell you what the point is. The point is, you can use photons to free an electron, if it has enough energy, uh, and this process is called the photoelectric effect. They might just simply say, explain what the photoelectric effect is, and you would say, it's the freeing of trapped electrons by using uh, the energy from photons. write this word for word if you want to put it in your own words. Half. You have a sweater on, man. What did you do this morning? You woke up, you looked outside, you checked the weather. 29 Celsius. I'll wear my good old hoodie sweater. <coughs> this guy's in shorts. This guy's in shorts. 
t-shirt. It's the hit, well this week is it this week is the hit twenty nine. Oh my god. I know. What's up with that? But it's not free at the victim of the thirties. Say again? The highest temperature this week will be twenty nine. Yeah, I don't know how this happened. My grass in my garden is turning brown. I can't believe it. Yeah, I the garden. Of course, I, everybody has a garden. Well, unless you live in an apartment. The only, there's only two teachers that live in apartments. So. Yeah? I think so, anyway. Uh, okay. The reverse is true. What I mean by that is... If you have an electron, if you have an electron and you fire it at the metal and it sticks in the metal, then what gets released? But a photon. So you can actually you can actually do this backwards as well. You can stick an electron on the metal and release a photon. It's actually a useful thing to do. Uh, the reverse is true. When an electron strikes a clean metal, it could release a photon. I should really have said when it when it strikes and sticks to a metal, it will release a photon. Oh, you can do it both ways. So you can fire an electron and release. You can fire a photon and release an electron, or you can fire an electron and release a photon. You can do it both ways. Uh, the photon hits and frees the electron, and the opposite, the electron hits and sticks to the metal and releases a photon. No, actually, the photon disappears. It gets converted into another form of energy. Which one is stuck? How can it be I actually I never yeah I maybe I said it but I didn't say it here I I'm, I'm sorry it's not that the photon is freed if the electron hits it but a photon is created as released there wasn't like there was a photon trapped inside of it waiting for an electron well yeah I mean it wasn't inside the metal to begin with. Like metals don't have photons of light inside that you could break out, you know. So uh, it's created because the energy just got converted into energy. The light is a form of energy that happen. Is there a difference in the uh, The metal just needs to be clean because you don't want anything on the surface to prevent the absorption or the release. So, really, the only condition is the metal just needs to be clean and polished. That's all. Yep. Okay, continue. So, let's... Now, this picture's really bad. I, I have to keep... Uh, ignore the picture. I need to change it. Why have I got this disgusting picture here? It's terrible. Right, forget about the picture. So, um, right. L let's see if we can do this together now, okay? So, uh, I've got a metal surface. And I, I've got some light. And the light has a low frequency and low intensity. So just to explain, low frequency, you know what that means. The frequency is small. And low intensity means that not many photons, not much light. Yeah? Uh, like intensity is like how much you have per second. So low frequency, that means like it's a low color, like red. Okay? And low intensity means dim, not so bright. You know, you know when the light you can uh, turn the dimmer. Okay. So, will this cause um, lots of photons to be released or not many photons to be released or, or what? And, and the other thing actually just to say, because uh, I, I, I didn't quite make this point earlier, this electron is trapped. How much energy will it have? We said it has minus the work function. Now what happens if the light has energy which is much, much, much bigger 
than the energy required. Well, it means when the electron is free, it will have a lot of kinetic energy because when the photon of light disappears, its energy gets converted into the electron's kinetic energy. Okay? So if you have much more energy than you need to free the photon, all you do is you just make the photon move faster away. Okay? So, if the frequency is low and the intensity is low, what will happen? Will we have many freed of the protons, not many free photons? Will they be going fast or will they be going slow? So first question, will many photons be freed? No. Not many. No, not many because we don't have, sorry, I should have said many electrons be freed. Uh, will many electrons be freed? No, because we don't have many photons to begin with. And will they be going fast or slow? No. Yeah, because it only has a low frequency, which means it has just enough energy to free it, but not to make them go fast. So we expect some free electrons of low kinetic energy. Okay, what about high frequency and low intensity? So many freed or not many freed? Not many. Not many freed, and will they be going fast or slow, these electrons? Fast. Fast, good. Some freed electrons of high kinetic energy. Low frequency and high intensity. Many electrons. Many electrons and uh, fast or slow? Slow. Very good. Uh, slow. slow, yes, good. Uh, many freed electrons of low kinetic energy. And finally, high frequency and high intensity. Many freed electrons of high kinetic energy. Okay. Um, Again, this is uh, a little bit surprising because at the time it was taught that perhaps higher intensity, like brighter light, would make the electrons go away faster. But actually it doesn't. Like it will make more electrons be freed, but it doesn't make them move away any faster. But if you change the colour of the light, then actually the electrons start moving faster. That's a very surprising result at the time. Uh, I think if you can summarize this table, whatever way you want to write it down, it's good. Uh, they sometimes test students on this. They might say the light is replaced by blue light. What will happen to the electrons? You know, or the light is turned down. What will happen? You know, they sometimes ask this. And uh, I believe it was Einstein as well who discovered this. Mm. Yeah, that guy, huh? Uh, Got that? Up here? Or just that uh, you wrote it down? Okay. How are we doing the time? Ah, yeah, we're going to. Huh? When do people start saying this word? Um, high school level maybe. High school? Yeah. Ever you notice this is used a lot here? <coughs> it's good because uh, <coughs> it's it's not really positive or negative, so it can get you out of a lot of situations. You know, like how are you feeling? Grand could mean good or bad. No, 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 because maybe you don't feel okay, you know, but you don't want to talk about it. Yeah, but it's the same in grand. No, you don't, uh, you don't understand, it's a subtle difference. Yeah. It's because it's how you say it, you know, how was your exam? It's grand. How was your exam? Ah, grand. grand. <laughs> it's totally, you can't do that with other words. <laughs> no, it's not the same. Not the same. Um, you you you'll pick it up. 
don't worry. Uh, okay, you got that? Uh, so, we can actually form an equation here, and we can actually figure this out ourselves. Um, so, um, here's the picture before, and here's the picture after. So, in the picture beforehand, we have our photon of light, in it comes, and we have our electron here. Okay? And then in the picture afterwards, uh, what have we got? We've just got the electron moving away here. Uh, and this is the electron trapped here. Right. In the picture beforehand, what energy do we have? So, this light, it has energy. And what's the energy of this light? What was the formula for it? No, 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 the light. Oh, the, the HF. HF, okay. Plus, what energy does this trapped electron have? Minus work function. Minus work function. Why minus? Trapped. Trapped. Now, in the picture afterwards, what energy do we have here? Only kinetic energy of the free electron. So we have this equation, but please note, in the formula book, it's more normal to write the equation uh, like this, uh, as um, um, HF equals KE, or work function plus KE. That would be the more usual way to write it. But I like writing it this way because this reminds us this is the before and this is the after. Okay, so the formula is this, which is often written like this in formula books. Uh, the photoelectric equation, if you want to give it a name. Okay. By the way, uh, this formula was discovered by Einstein. In fact, it was this formula he won the prize for, the Nobel Prize, and not the E equals MC squared formula. He didn't get any prize for that. It was this, this one that he got the prize for. You know, might surprise people to know because the other one is more famous. Uh, okay. Oh, I actually said it here. Right. right uh, here we go. So the work function for copper is 4.7 electron volts. A photon of wavelength 250 nanometers strikes the metal surface. After the photon strikes the metal surface, an electron is freed and travels at speed v. What is the work function in joules, and what is the V of the free electron? So, just using the formula I gave you one minute ago, you can easily get the V here. I'd like you to try that before I do it. I think you could do this. How do we convert 4.7 electron volts into joules? Times, Times E. 1.6 e. yeah. by 10 to the minus 19. Perhaps. Let's have a look here. So um, we're using the formula. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. Do let's just check what we know. 
Uh, we know H. Do we know F? Yeah. Well, we could know it, yeah, because we're given the uh, wavelength. Uh, do we know the work function? We are. There it is there. And uh, do we know the kinetic energy? Well, it's what we need. So I could say H C over lambda, because the F is C over lambda. That's equal to work function plus a half m v squared. And what do I want in this formula? V. So I'll just rearrange this. I'll put a 2 here, a 2 here, cancel. I'll divide by m. And uh, move it around. So v equals square root 2 hc over m lambda minus two work functions uh, but the work function is in electron volts so I'll have to multiply it by E to get it into uh, joules because this one is currently in electron volts ah oh, that's handy so let's just put this in in one go right two H, what's H? Number 6, isn't it? And C is 28? And uh, what is the mass of an electron? That's number 1, isn't it? And what did I say the wavelength? Oh, no, that's a proton. Uh, it's 3. And what did I say the wavelength was? 250, was it? 250 nano? Uh, and what did I say the work function was? And then this is uh, three again. Right, so putting in all the numbers, I hope this went in correctly, I get the V is uh, a big number. It's 302 kilometers per second. 302 kilometers per second. Did you get this? Exactly? Good job. Okay, okay. Got that? Yeah? All right. Let's see. Next now. Now, you... Threshold... Uh, the work function... Um, this means the electron has that much energy when it's trapped. So in order to free the electron, you need at least this much energy obviously. Uh, so if, the if a light photon has exactly this energy, then the electron is just about free. That is, we kind of have this situation. We want to free the electron but not give it any kinetic energy. So we, just, we want to just about free it. So that means HF should equal the work function. To just about free it. So this frequency here, where the work function divided by H, this is like the minimum frequency you need to free the electron. So the minimum, we actually give it a special name. We call it the threshold frequency. It's the minimum frequency required to free an electron. It's called the threshold frequency. What do you mean threshold? Threshold is kind of like the point that you have to pass to get something. So for example, the threshold for passing is 40% in the exam. Mm. You know, it's like the sort of the, the point to cross. Cut line. Cut line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut off cut cut off line. Yeah, yeah. And there's a formula there, uh Rwanda work function over H. Got that? Yeah. 
Threshold frequency, that's all you really need. Continue, Bruce. It's the last sentence that you really need. It's the threshold frequency. Yeah, yeah? okay. Uh, so here's an example. The work function for gold is 5.1 electron volts. What's the threshold frequency? All right, let's work that out together. So what's the formula for threshold frequency? The minimum frequency is... Uh, just had it here like one second ago. Work function over H. Uh, don't confuse me. I'm getting confused. Work function, which is that, over H, which is number six. Right. 1.23 times 10 to the 15 hertz is the threshold frequency. So to free an electron from the surface of gold, you need at least this frequency of light. Okay, okay. Uh, if the photon had twice the threshold frequency, then what would be the kinetic energy of the free electron? Um, I'll let you calculate that actually. Let's see what you get. Try part B here. If the photon had twice the threshold frequency, which we just worked out here, 1.23 10 to the 15, what would be the kinetic energy of the free electron? Uh, Bruce, try part B, yeah? Okay, what answer did you get, if anyone has an answer here? 5.1. Correct. Yeah. Let's have a look. So, if I use the formula E... Oh, I know it. Take it. Thank you. Ah, <coughs> oh dear. Sunshine. Too much sunshine. Uh, okay, where's my formula gone? Uh, yeah. HF. HF equals. Work function plus. Thank you. Work function plus kinetic energy. Okay. Now, uh, what did we say the frequency was? Two we said it's two times the threshold frequency. Yeah. Uh, what is the threshold frequency? The formula. Oh, work function over H. Work function over H. Cancel. Cancel. Two work functions equals work function plus kinetic energy. So you end up getting kinetic energy equals work function here, which is 5.1 electron volts. So if you went to the trouble of calculating it, fine. Uh, but there's actually a sneaky way, a wooky way of doing it. Wookie means sneaky in English. Right. I've just decided that <laughs> right now. Let me go to Twitter to announce this. Okay. Yeah. And then you can use it to describe someone that has been very wookie. Uh, yeah? Yeah, and then two frequencies there's one work function of kinetic energy and, and three frequencies there's two work functions of kinetic energy yeah 
Uh, they don't usually do this in the exam. They don't really. Too sneaky. Uh, okay, continuing. Sorry, do you need to write this down? Yeah. You've been sitting there with the bag on your lap like you're ready to run out the door. We're going to do some questions after this. Just, just relax. Wait, what? She's thinking about going home. It's like she's on the bus and she's about ready to get off. <laughs> she has everything ready <laughs> and just waiting to go. Uh, right. So before you disembark off the bus, I would like you to try some of these, okay? This will be your homework. So let me just stop the video and you can try these for a few minutes. 